Okay, so it's raining outside, uh, which means I might as well get onto this little uh, restoration of the external helm on the stink boat. Um, it's quite rusty and stained. Uh, there's big crack here. Um, some over here as well. So I will try and just um, refurbish it as best I can. Uh, what else do we... You can see it, it was varnished at one stage. This is obviously the, the side that was closest to the cabin and the most protected. So we'll sand it back and um, do what we can to restore it. And I, I think it'll come up all right. Um, see, that's quite nice. I, I'm guessing that's teak. Quite possibly. It's probably quite a nice grain there if I can sand it back and bring it up. Uh, anyway, we'll have a bit of a play with this and see if we can bring it up to scratch. So I set to work in just lubricating the threads. I use a product here called Inox, which I use on most stainless stuff on the boat. It's a good penetrant and lubricant and doesn't sort of leave too much of a mess. So I was worried about stripping the heads on the screws at the end here, and that's why I used the lubricant. I wasn't, I've never done this before, so I wasn't sure how easily they would unscrew, but I didn't feel like I had much leverage. Turns out the Inox worked well, and uh, it wasn't much of a deal at all. The only other consideration I had was whether I should number each spoke so that they went back into the exact same spot. I thought about it for a second and then um, basically didn't bother and it didn't end up being an issue at all. So then it was just a matter of dismantling each spoke and separating the timber handle from the whole thing and then I basically had each one of the components apart ready to restore and refurbish it. So I started working on the timber work, which gave me a lot of satisfaction, but it did involve a lot of elbow grease. I didn't bother using any mechanical sanders. I just hand sanded everything. Uh, and this has been cut back, but it was quite a few hours of um, just sanding away. But quite therapeutic, really, just sitting in the shed, sanding away, listening to the radio. I uh, enjoyed it. And it was good results. I managed to use a little bit of the um, Type Bond 3. This is great stuff. It's waterproof. Um, pretty sure it's an American glue. Uh, but you can get it in Australia. There's distributors. So it's just easy to use. You just whack it in. Same as um, any other sort of PVA. Like in Australia, we kind of quite often would use Aquadir. Um, but I just really like the workability of this Type Bond. It's great, great stuff. I actually got to get another tube of it. And what I'm doing here is just putting it into the crack and then forcing it in with my hand. And then um, basically when you sand the timber, the fine dust goes in with the glue and gives you probably the closest match that you'll be able to get with the grain because it's basically the same timber that's already in the in the handle so that's a start there and then just a matter of a bit of sanding and then probably do that at once or twice more just make sure that glue gets right down into that crack and seals it so that we don't have any extension of that once it gets back out into the uh, weather it's coming up pretty good already as you can see I just had to scrape any bits of glue out from the rings that go around the handle because I didn't want to fill them up and sort of change the look of it. A little bit fiddly, but nothing um, too difficult. So that's come up all right now happy with that it's never going to be you know totally concealed but that's not a bad little repair I reckon so that grain's 
come out of that quite nicely. Um, I've just put all of these on here so that I can paint them and they can sit there and uh, go off. I'm just going to put a bit of some stuff I had just lying around. It's um, Fungi Shield. is So that'll go on today and then a couple of coats of this stuff, um, just a varnish. Probably two or three coats of that. Um, that one is a high gloss. Yeah, I've got a satin one, but I'll go a high gloss and we'll see how it comes up. Uh, the only thing I just thought is if I paint these on those things, I can't then go and work on those. So maybe I'll come up with another way to, to get these in a position where I can stain them and put them on something. So the plan is to um, paint this fungi shield on. Jeez, it makes it go dark. Um, and then take them off the stainless spokes and um, I'll be able to stand these up over in a quiet part of the world. And let them sit for, I think it's at eight hours, so I'll just come back tomorrow and start putting the varnish on it. This is just a, it's called Fungi Shield. It's good for any timber that you put outside. Well, it's good for anything that's down by the water, really. Right, one. Soaks it up. This is the one that I repaired. Put I don't mind um, like old stuff on boats looking old. It doesn't have to look brand new. Just has to look like you care for it. You know the old that crack in that. So what? It's a crack. It's been repaired, and uh, the wheel will continue to work well now. Instead of if I'd left it, um, that crack would have probably just opened up. Another crack would have opened up on the other side, and before you know it. You've got half a piece of wood sitting on you at the helm there and then uh, not long after that the other half just falls off and then you've got one spoke with no decorative timber handle on it so you don't like using it or you just throw it away like most people tend to do these days so yeah this will just look second hand but um, Used but not abused, let's say that. Just loving this stuff, soaking it up. It's probably, I mean, it would have been bought new at some stage and just sat there with a, I don't think they put a hell of a lot of varnish on them when they're brand new. And, you know, if it's been out in the weather for even just 10 years, it's, um, the brush into the into the tin because it can contaminate the contents of the tin but it's really old so I think we can live with it probably already contaminated in it geez that's come up nice look at that just let that soak in sweet well that's come up looks good already doesn't it look at that nice So I'll just uh, leave these over here to 
dry. I think it says eight hours or something like that. But anyway, we're getting a, this lot now. Keep you busy. So that's the second coat of varnish. It's coming up quite well. There's a few little bits and a few little sort of air bubbly bits, but looks pretty good for an old thing. They look all right. A bit fiddly, but that's two coats. So I'll put one more coat on tomorrow and I think that'll do. Okay, so I put the third coat of this um, Spa Marine varnish on here and here early this morning so I'm pretty keen to put it back together I think it's going to look great uh, I've given this a nice little bit of a tidy up and I'll just whack a bit of lanolin grease on these threads which will just help them out what a brand new container it's good stuff this uh, whoops I love using this um, this lanolin grease because when you're um, when you're finished with it, your hands are all nice and soft and smell smell beautiful. It's like workshop beauty tips.